favorite ways that I like to do configurations and get table information is to do an Excel form or to do a SOLIDWORKS native, what I'll call a SOLIDWORKS native one. In Excel, you can auto-generate it. If you know what you're doing, you can create it manually. But uh, I generally like to let the software decide what it wants to do as it's doing it. Uh, you can choose to have it linked to the 3D model or not. You can also choose whether or not you want it to update, right? If I make changes in the 3D model, the reason why in SOLIDWORKS I might ever use Excel is just because it helps clarify information. I can do things like hide a row, you know, add in a column, and maybe add some color to clarify things. How do you get to them? Well, on your annotation toolbar, you'll see design table, and it'll create something that looks like this. When we come in, this is a design table created by SOLIDWORKS. How did I get this? Quickly, let's open up. So if we come into here, I just came to table and I said uh, design table. Because I already have one created for you guys, it's right here. So if I say edit feature, you can take a look. Blank is just blank. You go through and create everything you need. Auto create is what I generally use. It will go through the model and see what is different from configuration to configuration and put those in the table for me. Or if I have it written already, I can do from file. And if I have it from an external file, please make sure to link the file, all right? The second box is where you can, whether or not you allow somebody to make changes in the 3D model, update the Excel format, or if you just want to have it driven from the table 100%. And you know, every time you edit it, whether or not you bring in new parameters or not, that's your choice down here. Once that's done, I'll say edit table so we can get a quick look at it. And what I've done on this particular model is I've gone through, because when we give names to things, we, we're not always the most clear, I guess. Um, to me, it made sense to name the columns, you know, rectangle, dome, volume, and rounded. But if I were to choose to come in and unhide, you could see that here's the proper name inside SOLIDWORKS. So uh, someone like myself who's used to SOLIDWORKS, I can figure out what's going on. But if I'm trying to pass this information to someone who doesn't deal with SOLIDWORKS on a regular basis, I might not want them to uh, have to deal with that. So I will just very quickly come in and hide those. And I gave it a new table column header for it. So. Well, I hit too much that time, but that's okay. So let me just very quickly come in and unhide, grab this. I didn't want to see the default configuration either, so I just kind of right mouse click on them, hide. There we go. Once I make this look exactly the way I want it to look, for instance, on this one, I came through and gave a, a gray shading for the ones that were suppressed so that it just made it more obvious to me. When you click out, that accepts any sort of changes you have. And then when you go to the drawing, you can always bring in your design table. Again, it's under tables, it's design table, and it will show up exactly the way you have it showing in the 3D model. So that's a nice way to clarify, uh, make it clean looking, and, and have all the good benefits of using Excel. Then there's the SOLIDWORKS native, all right? I call it the SOLIDWORKS native. I guess it's called uh, the configurations, uh, editing configurations. But I get there by right mouse clicking on a feature or right mouse clicking on a dimension and saying configure feature, configure dimension. Once I do that, I am presented with a table that I can add or remove. You'll also notice down here in the tweet, I, I've given it a name, right? So how do I do this? I teach SOLIDWORKS and a lot of my students, they don't necessarily know how I did that. So let's quickly, in the 3D model, show you how I did that, all right? So again, you right mouse click, configure feature. It shows the one, right? But I wanna see all of them. So I'll say tweeter around it, uh, tweeter dome, all right? I'll give it a name. I'll click save, and now I'm able to check and uncheck and change my configurations. You'll see I can also add a configuration right here. 
when I say OK, if I go back to my configurations, you'll now notice I have Twitter listed. All right. The same can also be said if I wanted to look at the rectangle. All right. So this rectangular shape, depending upon my configurations, might have different looks to it. So I'll say configure feature. And actually, I'm more interested in the sketch. So I'll click, double click on that. It populates. If you want to get rid of one, delete it. You can see the different sizes. So I'll call this rectangle open. I click save. Say OK. Now I have two. So the bonus design tables using Excel, I could only have one. Uh, with a uh, SOLIDWORKS driven one, I can have multiple so that I can very quickly double click, pop open those changes if I need to make changes, and move forward. The negative, I can't bring this into a SOLIDWORKS drawing file. So that there's always positive and negative everywhere, right guys? So <clears throat> if you need to have it on a drawing information, using that one is not the correct one to use. <laughs>